It is time once again for the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. Junior just got a stroke of mixed luck. Uh, he's doing some exploring, trying to kind of play catch up with his uh, sort of economic situation here. He had a kind of a, a rarer deal when it came to finding planets than the other two, and so he's not. Uh, he's been kind of making up for it with a lot of mining because uh, he's gotten a lot of minerals instead of planets, but those are starting to run out. Um, so he's been exploring, found a black hole here, which first was danger, and then it was a black hole. So I think uh, a ship pushed his ship into the black hole um, and killed itself in the process. Uh, but the very good luck was he decided to explore here. This was a white space um, out of all the spaces because, for one, it's two spaces away from the doomsday machine. Doom. And that means that the aliens that ended up showing up here, which is what he was hoping for, uh, or asteroids, or whatever the doomsday machine would go after, there's a, there's a few different things, um, are going to attract the doomsday machine at the end of this, this, this round of player turns here. So that's pretty exciting, uh, because one, there's this nice planet here, and two, the doomsday machine, even if his, I mean, even if his scout fails to take out all these alien ships, uh, the doomsday machine will come and either destroy those or kill itself. Um, and if it ends up destroying them, then it's probably going to have a good chance of moving towards Betty Crocker's area. So pretty nice turn of events for him. So we have scout versus alien ship. Um, the scout gets plus one to its attack strength, and it's going to attack first, and it might... I don't think it gets another bonus. Um, it gets plus one for that. It gets plus two total, so it's got five. And I guess he'll go ahead and shoot at the alien ship. He could just not do anything, but let's have him shoot. And the alien ship, let's see their defense. He'll go for the weakest one. And so it's five minus one. He needs to get a four or less to be successful, I do believe. And he did. He destroyed this alien ship. That's exciting for him. Pew! And now all the alien ships are going to fire. Um, oh, and he can't retreat. <laughs> My plan was he was going to retreat after this round if he survived, but he really can't. He's kind of in it for the long haul. Uh, so they have six minus zero. Um, yeah. And that's going to that's gonna do it. The scout is destroyed, but the alien ships are here awaiting doomsday. See you guys. See Sunny. See how much fun exploring can be. Look what you just found. You found a warp point. Now, you've found several warp points lately. Um, you found warp point two here, but last turn you found warp point one right here. So that makes these two spaces adjacent, which could be kind of nice for, for Sunny if he needs to move units up here, but could also be problematic because an invader could just go through warp point one, kind of get through his, get past his big build up here, and suddenly be kind of in the heart of, of Sunny's empire. And kind of a mixed blessing, I would say. Warp points one and one both being within his boundaries. Betty Crocker has constructed a battle fleet and he's moved that battle fleet, advanced it towards this final little white film that had been dividing the, the empires of uh, Sonny and Betty Crocker. So he's advanced, he's, he's also advanced his frontier fleet this way. That cannot seem anything but threatening to the sanctity of Sonny's terrain. Oy. Now it is time for my favorite kind of battle uh, in games, and that is one in which no players are involved, but you get to roll it out anyway. So it's Doomsday Machine versus three alien ships. And I don't know what kind of aliens these are that just kind of hang out on their planet, but they're, they're kind of like mini sunnies, I think, where they're um, super just defensive. They don't really want to do anything except protect their home world. They've got some decent technology. They could be exploring the stars, 
but they're not like that. Uh, so maybe they're a little different than Sonny, because Sonny, being a player, is incentivized to expand, whereas these aliens, they just kind of want to be kept to themselves. Um, uh, so, left to themselves. So we're going to start with alien ship here, this one. This one, alien ship B, who's also B. Oh, I think I can line these up here, I see. Okay, so these letters correspond to their attack order. All right, alien ship B, his attack is six, the doomsday, has a defense of two, but a hull strength of three. So he's kind of worth three of these ships and has overall better stats, the doomsday. I don't know why I, I gave I made him a male, but he is uh, 10. That is not going to do it. Now, the Doomsday Machine gets to attack twice, um, and he's the attacker. So actually, they attack first, because the defender goes first. There's never simultaneous combat in this game, and they, need, they both need to get three or less. That's one hit on the Doomsday Machine, and one not hit on the Doomsday Machine. So I will mark this with one damage here. And then the Doomsday Machine gets to attack twice. It's got an attack of nine, okay? And they both have a defense of two, so seven or less. Um, he's gonna go for the stronger one first. And he killed that one. Now he's gonna attack another one. And he killed that one. All right, and now it's a new round of combat. This alien ship uh, I'm tempted to let him retreat. That would be kind of fun to see this wayward alien ship. I think uh, that's going to really affect the game because then the Doomsday Machine would pursue it, and which could be unfair to a player. So we're going to have it just stick to its its guns, so to speak, three or less, and it failed. It's probably curtains for the alien ship. Oh, no. Doubting it. One more shot from the Doomsday Machine, and it's successful. The alien ship put up a fight. Um, Doomsday Machine damage is supposed to heal itself, so I guess we'll say it does. I'm tempted to let it stay so that there's some memory of this fallen people. But alas, we have to go by the rules and their efforts to just stay in their hole and protect what was theirs was for naught. All things in this universe must either be growing or dying. And these aliens have found that out the hard way. Sonny's been responding to the advance of Betty Crocker's forces, uh, the battle fleet and the frontier fleet, by calling off all his exploratory stuff. I think he might have actually sent one still. Yeah, he's got one that he's still going to send to explore. But the rest, including his bringers of sorrow, which had been in his um, uppermost planet here, Odyssey, uh, is, is coming down as well. The rest of the forces are just kind of hunkering down, uh, ready to weather the storm that is coming. Betty Crocker responded by doing kind of a split. He sent his frontier fleet down here, which has this whole collection there, and then uh, split off uh, two groups. So this, these could each be multiple ships from his battle fleet and had them go forward whereas the battle fleet's still kind of hanging back. Um, elsewhere in his sp increasingly sprawling empire, he's discovered two colonies, uh, col or planets that could become colonies, uh, right up here. One of them is called Sheldon, which is where my grandma lives. So that's going to be a special planet. Um, yeah, that's pretty much what's going on. Hasn't really done anything to respond to the Doomsday Machine. The Doomsday Machine, in order to come, would kind of have to have some random rolls that brought him close, because he's still not totally within range. But um, Junior could perhaps make it so that the Doomsday Machine moves closer to his areas. It wouldn't attack here, because this is a, a, a colored one. Um, but this one, I think, might be... Nope, that's a colored one, too, so... Could, no, nope, that's a colored one too. I don't know where it might go. Uh, what system is this? Uh, no, that's a colored one too. So it is preventing um, Betty Crocker from wanting to explore up here. There's been, he's been able to scan some of these tiles and I think some of them he wanted to turn over, but he's not doing it because of the doomsday machine. Do So Sonny's had to scramble his forces in, in order to kind of uh, 
balance for contingencies based on all the different threats that are coming at him. The warp point doesn't help in this case because he's had to bring his bringers of so sorrow back here to kind of help guard that because the frontier fleet could just move forward, warp over. Um, he also has to protect all three planets, so he's had to shift things around there. Um, he sent the scout in to start a battle with uh, with Betty Crocker's advanced forces, just to see what they are. He, I don't think he really hopes to win the battle, but battle started. That's not that great for Betty Crocker, even though he's probably going to win, because um, uh, because now the raiders are known. The fact that he has raiders and the fact that he is insectoid is also known to all the players. So. That's, that's unfortunate, but it had to come out eventually. He was hoping to be able to get them further into Sonny's ter territory before that happened, but the scout there <laughs> really changed things. So Raiders are going to get to fire first. Um, and let's see, they get a plus one because there's twice as many of, more than twice as many of them. There's six units here. There's actually two Raiders and one uh, cruiser. I don't know why the cruiser is CA. I really don't get that. Um... So, but then he's going to get a minus one because the scout has a defensive bonus of one. So he's got to get a five or less here. And that's a ten. And that's an eight. So both of them miss. The cruiser is also going to get to attack. And the cruiser has to get a four or less. Five, not quite. So scout's going to get to return fire. This could be an upset. And he is going to shoot at the raider. I believe he can. Let me check on to see if he even can shoot at the raider. We'll see. Yeah, he can. So he's going to um, attack at, he has to get two or less in order to win because the raider uh, has a defensive technology. That was one of the technologies that uh, Betty Crocker recently got from the ship, the wrecked ships he found. So, and he failed. So now it's going to be the start of the next round. Um... I think Betty Crocker's going to go ahead and just shoot. And again, he needs a six or better. And he did it. This scout is gone. Betty Crocker has won the battle. And I can roll to see if he gets experience. Um, I guess one of the raiders would be able to get it, but not the other, I think is how it works. Okay, apparently it's the whole raider group that would get the experience. And they have to get a two or less, but they minus one to the die roll because um, the insects have great military academies, and they did not become veterans uh, because they killed that scout. Now it's going to be Betty Crocker's turn, and his movement um, did upgrade as well, so he gets an extra, his units get an extra space this final wrap turn of, of the ninth round of the game. Betty Crocker has split the three that were involved in the battle and put them in three different places. Oh, um, he revealed this warp point one. Now this... For some reason, in the expansion, they they duplicate all the counters from the original game. So you end up with way more counters than you need for one. And then you also end up with weird things like this, where they're, especially if you mix them all together like I did, where you can have three warp point ones. There's only supposed to be two of each warp point. But I'm going to say that they're all three adjacent. Because if you're warping, why not? Who's to say you can only warp between two points? Um, so that makes for a really weird situation here. So from this space, you, you ha essentially have um, eight different options on where you can go, one for each hex side, and then the other two revealed warp points. Um, and there could be another warp point one out there as well. So that could make for really interesting stuff. Um, revealed yet another planet here. Really sweet spot. Um, I'm afraid maybe Betty Crocker's spreading himself a little thin, though. Uh, it's going to take him a while to colonize everything and also prosecute this guerrilla war he's engaged in with um, Sonny. He also brought his battle fleet forward. Frontier fleet he, he kept there, which is probably wise. If he moves it too deep into territory and he loses it, then his kind of main uh, ship producing area here is going to be left uh, a lot more um, vulnerable. He does have substantial units there. He's got a shipyard. Wow. And what else? And more shipyards. I don't know why I put those in two separate things, but I did. And he's got a stack of defenders here, so um, he, he wouldn't be too bad, but 
yeah, we don't have enough experience with combat to know how this kind of thing would work out, so he doesn't want to lose lose anything in, in prosecuting this. Boom. I'm in the midst of doing Sonny's um, technology, economic phase sequence thing, and he's... Uh, couple interesting things here. One, his maintenance is just going up and up. His strategy of just building ships and holding them in place are not, is not going well. He needs to come up with something else or he's going to eventually just get drowned, drowned under the weight of his own forces. So he's going to have to be thinking about how to go on the office, offense just to use these ships and maybe like take it to um, Betty Crocker a little more and I think he's gonna have to do that this turn probably. Uh, his other big thing he's gotta be thinking about is what it, he, what he's going to do with his uh, research points. So his big decision he's debating is whether to go for that ship size 7 and get the Titan in order to just kind of really suck it to um, Betty Crocker with this monster ship Unfortunately, the Titan would mean um, having to pay a lot more money, and he only has 45 to spend right now. Uh, his other choice is to get scanners to, to counteract those raiders that were revealed. Um, it's a tough call, especially knowing Sonny. I could see him wanting to go either way, having the security countermeasures or just being a big guy. Um, I have to do a little thinking on that. We're going to end off this video on the cusp of the start of the 10th round of turns in uh, this game of the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. I thought we could take, I could stand on a chair and give you an overview of just the board and how things are looking. You see a lot of blue kind of spread out, a dense clump of red, and then kind of a wing-like structure of yellow uh, emanating out from here, but then the wings bunch on the ends. Uh, that's interesting to look at. A um, lot going on here. I've talked at length a lot about it. It'll be interesting to see what happens on this next turn. It's kind of a little intense, which it makes me feel like I can't do it right now. I need to have some time to let my nerves settle before this drama commences. Um, Junior, on the other hand, he has been having some unfortunate, I would say, research roles. His, his goal is to get fighter technology up to two, buy a bunch of fighters, and start dealing with these non-player character forces that he has to contend with. Um, he would like to colonize this planet right here, but he really can't do that while the Doomsday Machine is there, because as soon as he sets foot outside of his little wing shape, the Doomsday Machine will pounce and destroy whatever forces he puts into play. So he needs to finish up his build up here by a bunch of fighters. He's got the carriers ready. Come in, hopefully win this combat, um, and then at the same time get some forces ready over there. So he's kind of just been taking it easy, trying to keep his maintenance costs low, buying some bases, um, occasional scouts. So he's going to maybe do a little scouting next time. And then hopefully, I think he's got five more points he needs. Hopefully, he'll probably go overkill. Um, but he still could roll <laughs> low again. Um, but hopefully he'll get his fighter technology too and be able to see some action on the turn following that, which could very well be next time on the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament, Space Empires 4X, Brawlty Leg 5.